Welcome back to Logic Video Lesson 4.5. In this lesson, we're discussing the notion and the understanding of the traditional square of opposition. Like we earlier in our earlier lesson, we discussed the modern square of opposition, in which you could put the four categorical propositions A, E, O, and I um, into a square essentially, and we Set, we saw that there, the diagonal relationships between those four propositions are contradictory, such that an A statement has the opposite truth value as the O statement. Yeah, the O statement. Such that an A statement cannot be true at the same time in which an O statement is true if they're using the same terms. Um, that was with the modern uh, square of opposition in terms of the existential fallacy. Um, today we're going to see that the horizontal and the vertical axes of that same square do have can have logical relationships um, if we have if we revise our understanding of the existential fallacy. The traditional square of opposition was developed by Aristotle and it became very important for understanding how um, uh, propositions can be logically evaluated. Such that once you see that there's truth values, we'll be able to uncover how um, it, we can use this for determining, for instance, whether or not immediate inference arguments work. And the relationships, the top relationship, is going to be called a contrary relationship. And a contrary relationship is defined by the idea that at least one of the values has to be false, but they're, and they're not both true, uh, which means that they can both be false, but you can't say that for sure, right? That at least one's false, but they're not both true for certain. The bottom relationship is called the subcontrary relationship, and that's defined in the idea that at least one of them is true, but they can't both be false, so it's the opposite. In terms of the verticals, we'll see that if a proposition is true above, then the truth flows downward such that the propositions below will also be true. And conversely, we'll see that um, if a proposition is false below, it's necessarily false above, but you can't assume any more than that. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch over to a screen recording and I'll kind of talk over how those propositions work. And then I'll come back and we'll talk about the existential fallacy. Okay?